Welcome to segment 6 of our presentation on menopause. Today we are going to discuss one of the conditions which like urinary incontinence is very much concealed because this is a condition that women are ashamed of talking about and it reduces the quality of life of a postmenopausal woman. Most conditions that affect the genitals, genital urinary system, most people during menopause are traditionally concealed and not discussed with children because the upbringing and the cultural attitude is such that you cannot discuss these things with children. But children are the people who know what to do about most conditions that postmenopausal women. This condition we are going to discuss is called pelvic organ prolapse. What is pelvic organ prolapse? It's herniation of one or more of the pelvic organs into the vagina. These organs, they fall into the vagina. Which organs are likely to fall into the vagina? One of them is the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder can fall into the vagina. Secondly, the womb or the uterus can also fall into the vagina. And the rectum can also do the same. If any of these things of both falls into the vagina until they come out, it's called pelvic organ prolapse. It's so common that it affects almost one in four women who are postmenopausal. It's so common that 25% of postmenopausal women have it. How does it manifest itself? A woman feels like you are sitting on a small ball. You feel that there's something down there like a ball, you are sitting on it. And sometimes it becomes difficult or even painful to go intimate. And these women always have a low back ache, chronic low back ache, that because these organs, as they fall down, they pull up the ligaments which are attached at the, at the back, and you feel this referred pain at the back, while actually the cause is in the pelvis. Sometimes a woman feels like a cervix is sticking out of the, the vagina, or you can put a finger there and feel that there's something coming out there, which is mostly the cervix, the bladder, or the rectum. A, a feeling of heaviness or pulling in the pelvis is also one of the manifestations. Sometimes they don't have vocabulary to express. A woman will just come and say, it, it seems like something is coming out. Then that way you must know that probably she has got pelvic organ prolapse if she says something is coming out. There. And because it's such an embarrassing condition, for men, we advise that all the women with pelvic organ prolapse need is just tender loving care. She must feel that she's still a woman. It doesn't mean that because she has got now pelvic organ prolapse, she's not a woman. What predisposes a woman to have pelvic organ prolapse? The same thing that predisposes to urinary incontinence is vaginal delivery. Vaginal delivery causes so much damage to the pelvic floor that the organs can fall from there. Be women who are doing manual work, heavy duty, picking up heavy objects, they are increasing intraabdominal pressure too much. They are likely to have pelvic organ prolapse. A woman with chronic pelvic cough, chronic cough, chronic cough, as you cough, the pressure is transmitted into the abdomen and into the pelvis. If you've got chronic cough, you are likely. But all in all, they are sitting on the atrophic milieu of menopause because lack of estrogen, which causes pelvic floor weakness and atrophy. That's what makes all the above to predispose to pelvic organ prolapse. Let's discuss them one by one. The bladder, the uterus, and the rectum. The bladder prolapse. If you look on the left-hand side, is a normal anatomy. The uterus is, if you look at the level of the uterus above the bladder and the bladder is below and you see in the middle is the vagina and the rectum on the right. But you look there in the cycle, in the cycle here on the right, the bladder is starting to bulge into the vagina that is prolapsing into the vagina and that's what you call cystocele. A cystocele is a prolapse of the vagina into the a prolapse of the bladder into the vagina. 
as you can see here, this bladder will soon prolapse. As it prolapses, it pulls the uterus along, but the leading cause is the leading organ is the bladder there. That is a cyst. And uh, you can grade cystocele depending on severity. If it's just starting, like grade one, it's just starting, maybe a woman might not even complain about it. But grade two is already is already at the orifice. Then it the woman should complain about it because that is what causes a intermittent urination. It doesn't urinate all the urine. It, it urinates and still remain with a lot of residual volume. And it, it disturbs the urethra vesical angle. These women probably present with cystocele plus urinary incontinence. The same as grade 3. They definitely will have cystocele with urinary incontinence because there, the urethra vesical angle is Let's look here. Again, the normal anatomy is on the upper part. And if you see here, the uterus on the normal anatomy is above the level of the bladder. But if you look down there, the uterus is descending down into the vagina. It's simply at the level of the bladder. That is what we call grade one uterine prolapse. It's, pro it's the uterus. And the here I'm, I'm repeating again the normal anatomy. If you look at the normal anatomy, where uterus is sitting, it's above the bladder. But if it's a, it prolapses, the uterus is the one that's prolapsing, it will go down from a level above the bladder. It will descend down and prolapse until it reaches the intraeters and even pass and hang outside the body. If it all hang outside the body like this, it's called prosidentia and it pulls along the bladder together with it. That is what uterine prolapse is like. And many women with uterine prolapse, they present late because they hide these symptoms. It's surprising, something that is unusual. And the, the staging, we stage it in this way. Stage not is a normal without prolapse. Stage one, it just protrudes inside the canal. Stage two is going up to the vaginal opening. Stage 3, half of the uterus is outside, half is inside. And at the worst stage is when the whole uterus is outside. You find most women represent with uterus already outside. The prolapse of the uterus, as I've said, it's staged depending on the level of the uterus in relation to the hymenal ring. This is what you can feel, you can see. If you put your finger inside and you find something is coming down there, you must know that it's the cervix that's coming, it's the uterus that's coming. Probably is another stage of uterine prolapse. But stage three and four, you can't miss them because everything, the organ is outside. The other organ that is likely to prolapse is the rectum. The rectum is where the number two, the fecal matter comes out. You find that the rect, if, if the anal opening is, the rectum prolapsed beyond the anal opening, such that when you go to the toilet to evacuate the feces, some of the feces are entrapped inside that rectal seal, inside that, inside that uh, prolapsed rectum, and you don't evacuate them all. You have to manually put your finger in the vagina to push them up in order to, get to evacuate completely. And this is very Let's just demonstrate for you a rectal prolapse, how it happens. The rectum will soon prolapse with an error. You see which direction it takes, which means even physical matter will take the same direction as that one. I think this one explains it very well, this one. If you've got a rectum, and it pushes towards the vagina because of pelvic floor weakness and it protrudes outside which means feces are going to pass the anus and lodge there so you're going to have chronic constipation or tenismus. Tenismus is that feeling of incomplete evacuation after going to the toilet you still feel that there's something that's not there's something I've evacuated everything this is a picture of complete uterine prolapse, prolapse of the uterus. How do you manage it? Management is different. The best management is to prevent it, preventive management. 
If you couldn't prevent it, it happens. You either can treat it conservatively or surgically, depending on the state of the, of the patient and the physical fitness of the patient. If she cannot stand surgery, you better become conservative. If she can stand surgery, it's better to surgically remove it so that she can live a normal life. What do I mean by conservative management? I mean to say, during when the patient is pregnant, during antenatal care, she must attend antenatal care and, and all risks be identified there. And uh, avoid things that constrict this constricting gametes during antenatal care. A maternity wear should be loose because in that way the, you reduce the amount of pressure on the pelvic floor. And during labor, labor should be not be prolonged and difficult labor, avoid difficult labor, even avoid instrumental deliveries like vacuum and forceps because that's what damages the pelvic floor. After delivery, early ambulation, walk as early as possible. Stand up and start doing pelvic exercises and walk. Don't sit in bed the whole week without walking. That way you are predisposing yourself to pelvic organ problems. And after delivery, take contraception. Because these frequent pregnancies every year, pregnancy delivery, every year pregnancy delivery, will damage the pelvic floor and predispose you to pelvic organ problems. It is space your children so that give you give the pelvic floor a chance to heal and recover. And again, general measures that avoid strenuous exercise, chronic cough, constipation, and heavy lifting as they are some of the causes. If it does happen and the patient is not fit for surgery, like it's too old, it's got other diseases that she cannot try to improve the general health of that patient by giving an estrogen replacement therapy in all, it can improve the degree of, a mild degree of prolapse, stage one, stage two, it can improve it. Do pelvic floor exercises. Do them as early as after delivery, not long or remote from delivery. If this don't work, we put on a pessary. Pessary is something that we put in the vagina to support the uterus up there, to support the bladder up there, to support the rectum up there so that it mustn't protrude outside, it mustn't prolapse. This is a pessary sitting in the vagina supporting the rectum. You can see the rectal seal on the right and it supports also the bladder on the left and you push the uterus up. This is a pessary. It's one of the management. If the patient can withstand surgery, go to surgery. There are a lot of procedures that you can do. One of the commonest in my call called oplasty. Some people who prefer to do uterosacral fixation with the vault, and some prefer sacrospinous fixation, sacrocolpopexy. That's what I prefer. I usually do sacrocolpopexy on my patients, all of them. That's what I prefer. And uh, if the woman ha doesn't have a uterus, she has done hysterectomy, it doesn't mean she cannot have pelvic organ prolapse. In that way, she has got a vault there. And the intestine, because where there was uterus is now intestine, the vault can prolapse and intestine can go through the vagina out there like you see on the left end. That is called an enterocy. The intestine can come. Intestines can come there and find that if you can feel the peristalsis of the intestines coming out of the body. But the commonest that happen if a woman has removed a uterus is the rectum that will prolapse, rectocil. They usually present with a rectocil. In this picture, I decided I took a liberty of showing what uterine prolapse is in, a, in an animal, in a sheep. I decided to use a sheep here because you can't use a human being. Otherwise, it doesn't sound very nice if you use a human being. From this sheep with a uterus that's prolapsing, you can imagine what it would be like in a human being. I think you use your imagination there. I wouldn't put it here for, for 